with you. And being that this is the last part of the series, it's been a while. I've been doing quite a bit of, of things and I would love for you to take a look at some of the interviews that I've been doing. But in the meantime, we're gonna get into it. Okay. I'm gonna be real and in most relationships, some women that have been hurt strive to have more power than men, and I'll tell you why. After a Now PR Magazine survey, I've learned that a typical woman controls the relationship to three major levels of power. And I'm gonna tell you this, it really, really bothers me that a lot of people have not seeked the help that they need, because once you break up, it's a lot, you know? And as she positions herself, as the most valuable person as a relationship prize, it sets a frame where the man's job is to cater to her needs as the provider, frame, close frame. The man's value, and this is crazy because the worthiness based on how well he provides for her, it's judgment, a lot of judgment around that. How he was brought up plays a big part in it. How he deals with women subconsciously plays a big part in it. And for the most part, men accept her frames without even realizing that they are being controlled. And I, I, I'm using the word frame because I, I, wanna, I wanna get us away from control. And in this video, you will learn that exactly how many women control men and what can you do to break free of that control. And that's what they don't like. I hope you're following me because they don't like controlling women. And in most relationships, it's the women who are the leaders. I got that. I got that. But guess what? They take charge and subjugate a man by taking the judge role in the relationship they take it. What does that mean? What does it mean? And that's what we want to talk about today. It means that they take control of the frame of reference on what's good or wrong and what's proper and improper and on what are the standards. I've always seen laid back and easygoing. So when I've seen anything else, I wonder how much work is behind being a controlling human being or being a controlling person personally. It can be a cringe mode for men. Unfortunately, some men rarely challenge a controlling woman's frame, which basically means that they end up playing by their rules. What does that mean? So then we are starting a whole different relationship without the man even realizing, even though he's falling in love, that from one big picture or perspective, it's happening. But today, part three in this series, how to get a man to propose, I would like to focus on a practical side to being in a relationship, a practical side to understanding your partner and to enforce her frame of reference, I guess in the day-to-day -day life, what is she using as her reference? Well, in my opinion, she is following uh, compliance. Compliance, meaning how was she brought up? What does she see? Drama and nagging, a set of priorities of what's important, blaming and criticism, brow beats, beats them on a daily, mentally, defensive, shaming again. These compliance superpowers are not really something that we need. It goes back to the recent video that I made last week, blaming and shaming. It seems to be coming up quite a lot. And the dynamics of that, with these three tools that I'm about to give you, it becomes the relationship leader, which allows her, like I said earlier, to take control task so he can provide for her and make her happy. Okay, that is not balanced at all. That's slavery. Ladies, you don't want a slave. You want a man. I will tell you why I'm making this video. 
I am making this video for the people in the back. The ones that sneak in late all the time. We need to know the difference between building a broken man up and giving him enough support versus tearing him down. And you don't want to do that, especially with words. It makes him feel less than a man. Pay attention. Pay attention to the steps leading up to the truth. The truth, the actions or not, if someone is really interested in you and truly loves you, you will never need to pull them down to the point where you are both in a miserable knowledge of power. And I'm, I'm being very clear here is what it takes to ensure pain and bounce back as a woman. But what does it feel like for a man, a man that truly loves really, really hard, really hard, but never gets the respect that he deserves in return. And I wanna point that out today. And in this final series, before I get to something new, I have good news. Final part of this three-part series, there's not a lot of time in between scaring a man out of your life and building him up, building up his confidence and not putting him down. So here comes the 22nd window, right before you officially lose the man of your dreams. And I'm gonna be quite honest with you. If he walks out on you, that's your fault. Here's your first. Number one, a person, right? A person who is controlling may find it difficult to maintain friendships and relationships because people generally don't want to be micromanaged. It, it, it's stressful, it's oppressive, and it approaches the line of abusive behavior that no one should have to put up with. It's that simple. Let's end it right there. And just to start with the next, but this type of behavior, right? It doesn't always manifest as just controlling. It can take the form of an excessive, worrying, constant, unasked for advice, meddling, or trying to fix the problems they see around them. Now, that's a part of the beginning stages of uh, controlling behavior. So identifying them, that, that they're there, that it's a problem in the first place is a really big step in the right direction. Now, that level of self-awareness is difficult. I mean, I'm gonna keep it real. I have to, but how do you stop being so controlling? How do you stop being so controlling in a relationship? That's why we're here. First, where your need for control comes from. The need for control often stems from different types of anxiety and fear. Anxiety and fear. A person may be trying to control others to fall into predictable patterns and behaviors so that there are no unexpected surprises or deviations. The person may have had a hard time with these disruptions because their mind is constantly working in overdrive to head off any present or future problems. I hope that makes sense because that is what I am seeing or have seen in the past. Consider the way you are communicating. This is actually number two with others. Consider the way you're communicating with others because this is the breaking point. Number two is the way we communicate drastically um, with others, colors of perception is what I call it, the message of being delivered. Now, the message of being delivered simply means a person who is who is curt, direct, 
and unyielding is going to be perceived as controlling and they are not get it so that doesn't mean that there isn't a time and a place for such a delivery because there are certain times that there is a need to be driven in that way to get your point across but if that's your primary method of communication the people around you will come to resent your ass they ain't gonna want to be around you it's too much trouble too much drama a better approach would be to um, politely use language like please and thank you I know that sounds a little common it, it sounds very simple but you got to understand making a request or suggestions or asking for help if you need something it's it's not the same as dictating it's not the same as dictating and by no means by softening your voice or your approach you know you you'll you'll influence not only how people perceive you but you will create a way that you think about your messages and the way you deliver your messages they will understand what you need in that format you just have to know how to deliver it and number three we're finally here number three it is time to learn the art of relinquishing control of the outcomes of life's activities and i'm i'm really i'm i'm really on it like that you know control tends to rear its head when things need to get done you know like the problem is that everyone has different standards on what constitutes a successful resolution or activity. Wow, okay. A controlling person may not just want something done, but they want it to be done to their standards or now they'll do it, they'll do it, let me do it. Because you don't know what you're doing. That isn't always the best way to get things accomplished. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes it's better to just let things be, let it go as it goes and trust the other person that is going to get done, period. So sometimes that direct control um, isn't the responsibility of the person and um, I guess who's perceiving it as controlling. And sometimes it's the other person who looks incompetent or refuses to do anything of quality. So they can shirk their own responsibility, which causes a war. Now, at the end of the day, the bottom line is in this series, it will have to end like this. Let's put it all out there, a relationship or a friendship can start to feel oppressive if people don't have enough space to move or to breathe, right? Everyone needs time to themselves to recharge their batteries, even the most extroverted human being needs to be free. <laughs> In a relationship, you should be functioning as a team. Ideally, you should be lifting one another up and creating a formidable partnership to take on life. Well, this can become a problem if you don't ever stop to take a breath or um, focus on yourself. And that's the issue that we are facing. And neither of you should be worrying about either tiny detail of their partner's day, life, or anything else all the time. 
right? You have to worry about them and, and, and want the best for them so they can be happy and have a good life. But that doesn't mean you have to be controlling. It doesn't mean you have to be controlling, but you can't do that all the time, nor should you do that all the time. Take the time to be with yourself. Let your partner take the time to be with themselves and give each other room like air, like breathing space, boundaries, whatever else makes you feel good or comfortable. Give them that. Give it to them. Give it to them. And you will see a change in your relationship. It's hard. But I want to say this. It works. And I want to also say thank you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me during this love, virtual love hack. Well, this is it. Like and subscribe to this page. Hit the notifications button and make sure you get all of the notifications when they come through. Because I'm going to tell you, I got some good things coming for you. Some exciting news and a whole lot of surprises. <laughs>